Hey guys, welcome to the Summit Heights Fellowship broadcast. My name is Edward Crouch and I'm the lead pastor here at Summit Heights. And before we get to our broadcast, I just wanted to say thank you for joining us. If you have a few minutes today, check out our website, summitheightsfellowship.com and you'll learn all about our church. We have a great student ministry, an incredible children's ministry, preschool ministry, and we do small groups all over our community from Mineola to Quitman to Winsboro, Hawkins, even in Big Sandy. We would love to have you check us out one Sunday. If there's anything we could ever do for you, please take a few minutes, go to our website, fill out that prayer card on our website, and we would love to pray for you, reach out to you, or minister to you in any way we can. Again, thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoy the broadcast. If there's any decisions or questions you have at the end of our broadcast, please reach out to us at our number on the screen or on our website. We would love to visit with you. Have a great day. Enjoy the broadcast. Any, <laughs> ha! Anybody else's head just hit the ceiling just now? Good gravy. I'm sorry, but if you are not into that worship, you need to get yourself checked out. <laughs> Golly, so um, I may pass out. I may pass out. I'm fighting a cold. These stage lights are right on me, and I feel like I just got raptured. So if I pass out, just somebody just come and, and pick me up, all right? Dang, Edward, mouth to mouth. I like it. Good suggestion, Danielle. All right. Here we go. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, the house of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled. She was afraid. She was troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Do not be afraid. What does that mean? How many times have we heard the do not fear verses? Do not be afraid, fear not verses. I have no idea what that means. But as Joseph considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save people from his sins. Do not fear. Don't be afraid. What does that mean? If you've been here over the last few weeks, we started a series, a Christmas series. We're walking you through the Christmas story from a little different perspective. We're looking at Mary and Joseph, and we're asking some questions because we know from their initial reaction to the news that she was going to be carrying the Son of God and Joseph was going to be the father of Jesus, that they were afraid. They were sad. They were scared. They were angry. Last week, we took a look at those emotions of sad and angry, and we asked a question. The question started off, how do I find joy in a world full of anger and sadness? And then what we came to realize is, is joy, we've already found joy. We found joy when we found Jesus. Joy is actually a gift from God. It's one of the gifts of the Spirit. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. So the question we asked and answered last week was, how do we experience joy in a world full of anger and sadness? Well, today we're going to look at fear. And we're not going to ask the question, where do I find peace? Because that's ultimately what we're looking for. We're not going to ask the question, where do I find peace in a world full of fear? Or where do I find peace when I'm afraid? Because just like joy, peace is a gift. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit lives in us if we know Christ. So if God's Spirit lives in us and peace is a fruit of that Spirit, we already have peace. And so the question is, how do we experience peace when we're afraid? How do we trust God and know that His peace transcends all understanding when we're afraid? I have three fears, three fears, snakes, spiders, 
and my wife when I bring home the wrong thing from the grocery store. I'm telling you, I married the most awesome woman in the world, but I have a severe issue of either not listening, not knowing. I don't, I, but when I come home from the grocery store and I have the list, every time I have brought home the wrong thing. And when I do that, she gets like angry, angry, and it terrifies me. It does. Yeah, and it should, she said. Well, hey, listen, when I grew up, Miracle Whip was mayonnaise. We called it mayonnaise. I didn't know there was mayonnaise. So you send me to get mayonnaise, I come home with Miracle Whip. Yeah, exactly. I did a Facebook poll this week, just like I did uh, the week leading up to last week's message. Many of you commented, you may or may not have known that you were going to be used as a sermon illustration, but it was interesting I just made a topic, what, what are you afraid of? What triggers fear in your life? And it was interesting because the answers were, were just as I thought. You confirmed again, just like last week, what I had been wrestling with all along. Because as I read those posts of what you are afraid of, there's two categories that really struck to me of fear. There's, there's the kind of fear, uh, it's almost, it's a healthy fear, okay? It's like snakes. If I walk out the door and there's a snake right there in front of me, the fear comes up in me and it says what? Shut the door, leave snake alone, okay? Same thing if I'm out hunting and a big grizzly bear comes up, okay? There's a fear that comes up in me that says, back away, leave big grizzly bear alone, okay? There's that kind of fear. There's the fear of picking up hot coals. It's going to burn you, right? There's the fear of touching a hot oven. I mean, that kind of fear can protect you, okay? But then there's another kind of fear, and it was interesting reading the quotes. A lot of you are, or the posts, a lot of you are a lot like me. You put you're afraid of snakes. You put you're afraid of spiders. One man, I won't name his name because he goes to this church, said he was afraid of his wife. Amen. All right. Uh, many of you, one lady said, I'm afraid of clowns. Okay. I mean, there's a, we all have heights. Okay. There's a lot of fears. But then some of you put a fear that falls into that second category. And this category is more of the fear of when you know that you're supposed to do something. Or you know you're supposed to step out and stand up for somebody. There's that whole right and wrong, and if you do the right thing, something bad might happen even though you're doing the right thing, and that, and that fear comes up. There, a lot of people put, I have a fear of rejection. I have a fear of abandonment. I have a fear that somebody's going to make fun of me. I have a fear that I'll be alone. I have a fear that I'm not enough. And then the one that I just circled over and over again that many of you said was, I have a fear of failure. I fear that I'm going to fare, fail. You know, early on in my ministry, when we, uh, I came on Summit Heights full-time, <clears throat> Edward and Danielle and a couple other people from our church took a mission trip over to Haiti, and uh, the pastor there in Haiti, along with uh, the pastor here in America, they had a vision to build this school in this small rural place, and they went on this initial trip to kind of get the foundation going and get that started. I'll never forget, they came back. Edward was so excited. And one of my fears is I have a fear of flying. Like, it's always been that way, even from a kid. And I just, I don't get in airplanes. I drive everywhere and just, I'm deathly afraid of flying. And I'll never forget, Edward came up and he said, dude, this is awesome. This is a great opportunity for Summit to be a part of. And man, we're going back in March and you're going. No, I'm not. Not unless they build a bridge from Miami, Florida to Port-au-Prince, Haiti. I am not going. That's the kind of fear we're talking about. That's the kind of fear I want to talk to you about today because there's that category of fear that can keep you from doing what God's called us to do. There's the fear that rises up in us when we know what we need to step out and do, and it keeps us from doing it. And the tension that we have as Christians is this, is we know the scriptures that say, do not be afraid. We know the scriptures that say, do not fear. We know the scriptures that say, fear not. And yet, all the while, if we're honest with ourselves, there are times in our lives, not just the snakes, not just the spiders, not just the bringing home Miracle Whip, 
There are the times in our lives where we know we're supposed to step out and we're afraid. What do we do with that? Psalms 56, verse 3, the psalmist writes, When I am afraid, not if, but when, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. You see, I think for most of us, if we're really honest with ourselves, what we really want as Christians is we want peace. We just want peace. And yet, for many of us, especially this time of year, we are experiencing fear. And it could be around anything. But for most of us, we're experiencing fear around God's told us to do something or we know we need to step out. I used this illustration over the summer. I was speaking to a bunch of students. And I used that illustration of everybody knows that one kid that's being picked on, that's being bullied, and you see him or her every day. They eat by themselves, they read by themselves, and you know that you're supposed to reach out to that kid and you're supposed to love that kid and be that kid's friend. But what comes up? Fear. You're afraid. The psalmist says, when that happens, I put my trust in you. What does that look like? Well, much like last week when we were figuring out how do we express this joy during this season, this joyful season, or just how do we express this joy as we live this disciple life in the midst of anger and sadness? Many of us now are asking the question, I know I am, is how do I experience peace when I am afraid? How do I experience peace when I am afraid? If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 14, and we're going to look at Peter we're going to look at a story that you're very familiar with, many of you are probably very familiar with, and we're going to pick on a disciple named Peter because he's easy to pick on. But here's the thing. While we pick on Peter, if we're honest with ourselves, we're going to see a lot of similarities in Peter that we have as well. And it's going to center around our fear. In Matthew chapter 14, starting in verse 22, Jesus had just fed thousands and thousands and thousands of people, uh, he had just uh, pulled off another great miracle. And much like most of the Gospels, when Jesus performed a miracle, the crowds wanted to follow him to the next town because they wanted to see the next show. All right? Oftentimes, Jesus would have to sneak away by himself, go somewhere by himself. This time, what he does is he takes the disciples, puts them in a boat, all right, kicks them off to sea, he goes up on a mountainside to pray just to get away from everybody, all right, his disciples included. We'll pick it up, verse 22. It said, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. So he, he sends the disciples on ahead. He goes up to a mountainside to pray. Evening comes. The boat is now a considerable distance from the shore. Jesus is still off praying, and it said that the, the, the boat is being beaten by the waves, and the wind is strong. And then in verse 25, it says, and in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. Verse 26, but when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were at peace. Okay, some of you are reading along with me. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. The disciples were afraid fearful. God in the flesh is walking on water. This same Jesus that they have spent all this time with is walking on the water, coming towards them, and they look up at him, and not only do they not recognize him, they label him as a ghost, and it says that they cried out in fear. I wonder how often we, as Christ followers, 
when we know that the God that we profess to serve and profess to know shows up in our life, that we get afraid. I'm the only one? Okay. How many times when we know that it's the God that we profess to serve and he shows up that we are afraid? The disciples were afraid. In verse 27, it says, But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. And here we go again. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Now, time out. This is where I want to pick on Peter. Because on the surface, we see Peter, and it looks like he's taking a step of faith. He's stepping up. He's manning up. And he's going to step out, and he's going to do what none of the other disciples are going to do. And I've read this story, and I've preached this story, and that's how I've read it, and that's how I've preached it until I kind of set myself back and said, you know what? This sounds really familiar to me. Peter's reaction sounds really familiar to me because it's exactly what I've been doing most of my life, and it's this. Peter goes from being afraid to being arrogant. Listen, notice he doesn't say, hey, Lord, ask me to come out onto the water with you. Think about that for a second. Ask me to come out onto the water with you because if Jesus would have asked him to do something, he would have an out. I either do or I don't. What he say? He said, command me. Like, make me do it. Why make me do it? Because I'm afraid. Ever been there? Ever said to yourself, okay, God, I know that's you, but I'm afraid. You're going to have to make me do this if I'm going to do this. That's how afraid I am. And oftentimes, if you're like me and you're like Peter, you will mask your fear with arrogance. I know that hurts, but think about it. I used to look at arrogant people, and I used to think, man, they, I, I, I want that. You know, I want to be that confident. It's not really confidence. It's why the bully, when you stand up to the bully, eventually the bully backs down. Because deep down inside, the bully is what? Scared. Oftentimes, our arrogance is covering up our fear. And the only thing we know to do is we know how to bow up and because remember, we're not supposed to be afraid, right? And so we substitute our fear for arrogance and we call it confidence when really we're just afraid. At least that's the way I do it. Jesus calls him out after Peter said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come onto the water. And Jesus said, okay, come. So Peter got out of the boat and he walked on the water and he came to Jesus. Now we see Peter experiencing a little bit of success. He goes from being afraid to being arrogant to stepping out anyway, and now he's actually walking on the water. He's doing it. He's pulling it off, right? He's doing what nobody else could do. He's conquered his fear, right? Verse 30, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. So we have a cry out in verse 26. And then back in verse 30, we're back again, crying out again. So we see Peter going from fear to arrogance to having a little bit of success to being afraid again. And ultimately sinking. But the story doesn't end there. Jesus, in verse 31, immediately reached out his hand and took a hold of him saying, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Time out. Peter doubting? The, the, the arrogant, confident Peter that in verse 28 said, Lord, if it's you, command me and I'll get out there on the water. I can do that. If it's really you, command me, and I'll get out there on the water. And Jesus saying, why did you doubt? It's interesting, isn't it? How many times we have this fear, this calling, this, God, I know I'm supposed to do this, but I'm afraid. We step out, we cover that with arrogance. 
we step out anyway and we're and we're doing it for a while but all the while we're still hanging on to fear and doubt and when we do at some point we take our eyes off of Jesus we get fixated on what's going on and we sink Jesus lifts Peter up and he says, oh, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, in verse 32, the wind ceased and those in the boat worshiped him saying, truly, you are the son of God. It's an interesting story. It's an interesting look at a cycle that I believe many of us as Christ followers go through, maybe not in the span of five minutes like Peter Maybe it's a, a month or a span of a year or two years or just a season of life where we're afraid and we don't know what to do with that fear. We don't know what to do with it because we've been told over and over and over again, you're not supposed to be afraid. Do not fear. The scriptures say, do not fear. God told Joshua, have courage and don't fear and yada, yada, yada. And yet we experience this fear and we don't know what to do with it. So we mask it with arrogance. We cover it up with pride, and we stick our chest out, and we say, I got this, while all along we're a mess inside. And even while we're doing that and we, we've got it, we step out, and we may experience a little bit of success, but all the while we have doubts in our minds about what's really going on. And it isn't until we succumb to the fear and sink this, is, this, this blew my mind, that we truly experience the peace and the grace of God. You ever wonder what would have happened to Peter had he just stayed on the water? Would he have gotten the embrace from Jesus? He had to sink to be rescued. Isn't that what this season is all about? The angel came to Mary and the angel came to Joseph and said, you're going to have this baby and he's going to what? Rescue his people from their sins. Isn't that something? Fear, arrogance, faith, accomplishing, fear, sinking, saved, rescued, the peace of Christ. But what does that mean for us? What do we do when we're afraid? You know, I told you, I went back and I said, when you, when you hear that, when you read those do not fear verses, when you, when you look at the psalmist in Psalms 56.3 and he says, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. What does that look like? Well, I think we can pick up three very simple things from this story. Number one, acknowledge your fear. Quit pretending that you're not afraid. Quit pretending. Just acknowledge it. Well, the Bible says do not fear. Yeah, the Bible says don't overeat either. We do that. The Bible says a lot of things that we do. Quit pretending that you're not afraid. When God calls somebody who is deathly afraid of airplanes to fly in one, guess what? You get afraid. It just happens. So quit pretending. Acknowledge your fear. Number two, step out. Step out toward your fear. I will give Peter credit for this. Even in his arrogance, he did step out. He was the only one to step out towards the ghost. He was the only one to step out towards the God that he was afraid of. He was the only one that took a chance and took a risk and actually stepped out. We call that moving towards your fear not backing away from it. There's an interesting story about lions and how they hunt gazelles. You know, gazelles are pretty fast. Lions hunt gazelles. They use this, this trick. It's pretty cool. They divide themselves up into two groups. The older lions sit, crouch in the grass where they can't be seen, and the younger lions chase the gazelles. The younger lions will chase the gazelles toward the older lions. When the gazelles are close enough, the older lions will roar really loud. And the gazelles, hearing the roar, will be afraid and fear will make them turn around and run back into the mouths of the younger lions. 
The ironic thing is, is if the gazelles would have just kept going towards the roar, the thing they were afraid of, they would have been safe. I think there's an interesting principle for here for us, and I think Peter showed us a lot of times in our fear, we want to back away. We want to back away because in this search for peace, we equate peace with comfortableness. And if God's called us to do something, if God's on the water and, and we know we're supposed to step out and we hear the roar, we become afraid, we want to step back and we tell ourselves, as long as I stay comfortable and I step back away from the fear, I will experience peace. Well, let me tell you something. If God's calling me to step out that way and I go this way, that's called disobedience. And I don't know about you, but every time I've been disobedient to God and stayed comfortable, I've not experienced any peace. In fact, it has made my life more miserable. You ever tried to outrun God and sleep at night? If the gazelles would have just figured out, go towards the roar. And if we as Christians, as Christ followers, could ever figure out, step into your fear. Because in your fear is where you find peace. In your fear is where you find peace. Remember with the Facebook poll? I'm afraid to fail. I'm afraid I won't be good enough. Well, guess what? You might fail. You probably will fail. Oftentimes, we are not good enough. But in Christ, when we step out, we can experience peace. In fact, it's in our failures when we sink is when we feel God's peace the most. Step into your fear. Acknowledge it, step out, and number three, in your fear, just know that Jesus is peace, and his peace is in you. Listen, man, if you don't step out, you don't sink, you don't experience the grace of God, and you don't experience the true peace of Christ. It's only when Peter sank did he get the embrace that I believe he's longing for all along? Acknowledge your fear, step out, and know that Jesus is peace. I'm going to close with this. I eventually got over my fear of flying. Okay, I had to. I had no choice. But it was interesting because after that first initial trip, I've been to Haiti three times. I've been to Guatemala once, so four overseas trips. I know that's not a lot, but for somebody that was deathly afraid of flying, that's like a big deal. And I, I was thinking about all the things that I have seen overseas in those four trips, all the things I've been a part of, all the times God used me on those trips, all the people that have been affected by me and my team going on those four trips. And I got to thinking, I preached in a drug and rehabilitation uh, center in Guatemala, and two men came forward and received Christ, and just how excited that was. One of my trips to Haiti, I met a young boy whose dad had died and mom couldn't feed him, and just through a weird uh, sort of circumstance, that boy got put in one of the orphanages uh, in schools, and man, I got to be a part of that, and the school that we built, and I preached in the Haitian church one time, and I got to thinking of all this stuff, and then I, I, I kind of got in my Peter, and I was like, wow, because I overcame my fear, two men got saved, a boy got some to go to school, and all this great stuff. And then God, just in my quiet time one day, and said, um, hello, <laughs> had you never got on that plane and had you backed out, those men still would have got saved. That boy still would have got to go to school. The school still would have been built because I would have accomplished my will through somebody else. God's going to do what God's going to do regardless of whether or not we ever step out of the boat and move towards the roar. Here's the key. Had I stepped back from my fear and not into it, I would have missed out on what God was doing in Guatemala, in Haiti, in all those other places. 
See, at the end of the day, it's not about failing. Because at the end of the day, when you step out into your fears, you can't fail. I mean, you, you may look like a failure in the world's eyes, but in God's eyes, if you step out and run toward your fear, you will not fail. And because even if you sink, even if you fall, even if you stumble, that's where you experience the grace and the peace of God. You know, it's taken me a long time to understand Philippians, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It's taken me a long, long time to understand that the peace that I've been searching for, I've had all along through the Spirit of Jesus Christ. It's also taken me a long time to realize that true peace is not in where I think comfort is. True peace is stepping into my fear and going towards the roar, towards the ghost, and getting out in the water, all the while being afraid, all the while having doubts. Listen, you're going to have doubts and you're going to be afraid. I'm convinced that when I am afraid, I put my trust in God is simply taking my fears and taking my doubts and following him anyway. In my fears and in my doubts. And when I do that, I get to experience peace and I get to experience all that God has done. Now, check this out and we'll be done. Do not fear. It's interesting. I was thinking about Joseph and Joseph's initial reaction when the news came that his virgin fiance was carrying a baby and he wanted to be done, like, oh, just divorce and we're done and I don't have to worry about this, okay? And I thought about this because for me, fear of flying, step back, I'm done. God's going to do what he's going to do anyway, but I'm going to miss out, Right? So I started thinking about Joseph, and here's, and here's something that came to me. Never thought about this before. When Jesus was prophesied, when, when, the, when the prophets would prophesy about Jesus, they would always say that he was going to come from the lineage of King David, right? And so it's interesting that God had to choose somebody to line up with prophecy. It was his plan all along that was from that lineage, Joseph. When you read the genealogies, you know those exciting books and chapters of the Bible that we love to read, the genealogies? I mean, they're there for a reason. You see that Joseph is in the lineage of King David. And I asked myself a question because Mary had no choice. I mean, Mary, you're pregnant. Jesus is in you. Joseph had a choice. Had he divorced her and ran, do we get the Messiah? The Messiah that was prophesied that was going to come from the lineage? It's an interesting question, isn't it? Now, I'm convinced that we would have because God's going to do what God's going to do regardless of what us humans choose. But think about all that Joseph would have missed out on. Had Joseph stepped back from his fear and played it safe, he would have missed out on being a part of the Messiah coming into the world. What are you and I missing out on because we're hanging out back here and not stepping into our fears? Let's pray. I want to pray for you this morning. I want to challenge you. And I'm going to ask you a question. And I'm, I want to talk to, to Christians, those of us that profess to know Jesus and serve Jesus. And the question is simple. What is it? that you are afraid of? Is there something in your life, and, th and this is in the context, this is not snakes, this is not spiders, this is not mayo, this is in the context of God's called you to do something or you know right from wrong, you know you should be stepping out and you are just afraid. I want to invite you to acknowledge that fear and just admit, maybe for the first time, I am afraid. And if you would be willing to acknowledge that there's something in your life that has triggered fear, would you raise your hand so I can pray for you? Okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right, you can put them down. 
And so I just invite you to wrestle with that fear. And I invite you to have the courage in Christ's power to move towards the roar and find out what God has for you and experience the peace and the grace of Jesus Christ. Some of you in here today, or you know you're sitting here today, you're not a follower of Christ. Some of you are sitting here today and you're struggling with this whole deal because you don't know what true peace is. You've never uh, entered into a relationship with Jesus Christ. You know that you are not his, that you do not belong to Christ. Scripture says that Jesus even said that he was the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's the reason we celebrate this season. He was to be born to save and rescue his people from their sins. If you're here today and you don't know Christ, I want to pray for you as well. Would you be bold enough to admit that you don't know Christ. Would you raise your hand? Okay. Well, Father, I love you. And I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for all that he is and all that he means to us. Father, I thank you for Peter, for using him and for showing us an example of what all this looks like. God, I pray over every person in this room. I pray for those that have acknowledged that they're afraid. And Father, I pray that in your power, through the peace of Jesus Christ, God, that you would move them into that fear that they could serve you more. I pray for those that are here today, Father, that need a touch from you during this season for comfort, for um, joy, for hope. Um, God, that you would just do that. Lord, we love you, and we praise you, and we honor you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. All right, next week we're going to talk about hope. And so uh, only one service, 11 o'clock, so we're expecting this place to be full. And we're going to center in on our hope in Jesus Christ. Amen? All right, we'll see you next week. Hey guys, welcome back. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast today. And if there's any decision you felt like God is leading you to make today, we would encourage you to uh, make that decision and to go online. There's a prayer tab on our website that you can go to. We'd love to pray for you. We would also love for you, if you accepted Christ today, to send us a text. We have a number at the bottom of the screen that you can text us the word accept if you accepted Christ, or if you would like to know more about baptism, just shoot us a text with the word baptize to that number on the screen and we'll get to you, I promise you. Hey, have a great day and listen, if you're looking for a great church and you don't have a church home, come visit us one Sunday. We have two services, one nine, one at 11. We'd love to see you, have a great week.